What's good, YouTube? This is Austin Sweet here, and you are watching Austin Does Everything. Welcome back to the channel, guys, and welcome to episode 12, woo, of Wrestling Talk. And there's actually a reason I did that, because today, um, this was suggested to me by Mr. Knuckles. Shout out to him. Um, this is the Legendary Wrestler of the Week. And there, there's a reason I did that woo at the beginning, because the Legendary Wrestler of the Week is the Nature Boy, the 16-time World Champion, and two-time Hall of Famer, Ric Flair. That's right, we're going to be discussing Ric Flair today. I'm just basically going to give you guys like a general background, my thoughts on him, what he did in the business, what, matches, what famous matches he was known for, and all that. Now, if you want me to keep going with the Legendary Wrestler of the Week, let me know in the comments below and we'll keep going. Okay, so Ric Flair got his start back in around the 1970s to the mid-1980s. He first wrestled to a 10-minute draw against George Scrap Iron Gadaski. He has had many matches with... He had a match with... He has had matches with Andre the Giant, Larry Henning, Wahoo McDaniel, even WWE Hall of Famer Tatsumi Fujinami for the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship. But um, Ric Flair really got a start when he went to the AWA in, 1990, in the middle of 1991. Ric Flair got a start in the AWA uh, Championship Wrestling in the Jim Crockett um, promotion before it got changed to WCW. That's when he really took off. When Ric Flair first debuted in WCW, it was just wow. I mean, the first match I was... I mean, there were so many matches I've seen him wrestle in, but the one that kind of sticks out of my mind as his greatest is him versus Sting at the first Clash of Champions. Uh, they wrestled to a 45-minute draw. Now, that right there is a match. If you have guys have not checked that out, go watch that match. You'll, you'll thank me later for that. But then when Ric Flair won the... WCW World Heavyweight Championship, he then jumped ship to the WWF around in the middle of 1992, and they didn't, like, proclaim that he was the, the champion, because the champion at the time was Hulk Hogan, and they dubbed the WCW World Heavyweight title the Big Gold Belt, of course, because Ric Flair has won the World Heavyweight Championship 16 times. Ric Flair then won the Royal Rumble for the vacant WWF Championship in 1992, but then he would drop the WWF Championship to WWE Hall of Famer Macho Man Randy Savage at WrestleMania 8. He then won it back. Um, but like I said, Ric Flair getting winning the WC, winning the heavyweight title a record 16 times. You cannot get any better than that. Like that's crazy. Um, then the last match Ric Flair was wrestled. We're gonna get to that. But Ric Flair was also a founding member of Evolution. It was him, Triple H, Batista, and Randy Orton. When Ric Flair was in Evolution, he wound up winning the World Tank Team titles with his partner, Batista. Now and then when Evolution disbanded at Unforgiven in 2005, I think, or 2006, Ric Flair won the Intercontinental Championship for the first time. It's been a while since, and I think it's been a while since Ric Flair won the Intercontinental title, but, <coughs> like I said, it could be wrong, but, um, the impact that Ric Flair had, he was the protege of Batista, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, he had some great matches. I think the one brutal match, in my opinion, um, that Ric Flair was in was WrestleMania 18 against The Undertaker. He even helped... I forgot to mention this. Ric Flair also helped The Undertaker claim his first World Heavyweight title at Survivor Series in 1991 before Taker lost the title to Hogan at this Tuesday in Texas. See, like I said, Flair helped The Undertaker win the WWF title at Survivor Series. Then, unfortunately, um, Mr. McMahon said the first match you lose you're going to be forced to retire. And unfortunately, that time came at WrestleMania 24 when he wrestled, in my opinion, an outstanding match with WWE Hall of Famer 
Shawn Michaels. But I think that's not the only career highlight that stands out to me as my favorite. My favorite was when he did, when he was with the Four Horsemen. The Four Horsemen. He was the leader of the Four Horsemen. They had, like, the, t the tag team titles. Flair was the heavyweight champion. The Four Horsemen, man. You cannot bring up a discussion about Ric Flair without discussing the Four Horsemen. The Four Horsemen, led by J.J. Dillon, one of the most legendary factions of all time. You had Flair, Arn Anderson, AA, Barry Windham, and Tully Blanchard. Those were the original Four Horsemen. And like I said, led by J.J. Dillon, one of the most legendary factions, if not one of the best factions in, this, in the wrestling business today. Then Ric Flair would take his rightful spot in the WWE Hall of Fame in 2008. He would then later get inducted, I think it was into the 2012 or 2013 Hall of Fame, I think, with the Four Horsemen. And that makes him the first person to be inducted twice. So in my opinion, and then when Flair retired, he then jumped ship to TNA back in 2011. Um, he, they did the same four fingers, but it was called Fortune. He led Fortune. Hey guys. Yeah. Go All righty. Okay. Hey, Sorry about that. All right, I'll take it out. All right, I'll be sure to take it out. Sorry about that. Um, but back to the discussion of Ric Flair. Um, basically, Ric Flair was a legendary wrestler. One of the greatest this comp the WWE has to offer. In my opinion, Ric Flair will go down as the one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. And that'll do it for this episode of Wrestling Talk. Um, now next week, I forgot to mention, it's going to be a little bit choppy. I will leave you guys when I go on my three days off. But that doesn't mean I will be back next week with a new episode of Wrestling Talk. Because I will be back next week with a brand new episode of Wrestling Talk. Um, so that's today's episode. Next Wednesday's episode of Wrestling Talk. I'm just going to go and say it now. The next episode of Wrestling Talk. We are going to be talking about one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Next Wednesday, the legendary wrestler of the week we're going to be talking about is The Undertaker. So get ready for that. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure you hit the like button, leave, your, leave all your comments, and above all else, subscribe, tap the bell, turn on all notifications so you don't miss the next video, and I will see you guys in the next video.